Yeah. Analytics, off the chain, for the challenge, not the same. Jake and Kyle, you know the name. Headline of Nation, we running the game. Yo, what is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back into the Fantasy Headliner. Kyle here with my start and sit analysis for the wide receiver position in week 17. And in this week, we're not getting cute. We're not getting crazy. We're going with the guys who got us here. This start and sit video is going to be a little bit different. This week, I'm really taking a look at the median, all right? Where, on average, do I think these guys are going to score? Talk about the floor and the upside a little bit with these guys. And honestly, this week, it's very, very important. So we're not going to be trying to run out there and say like, oh, hey, this guy could be a potential. No, there's no potential here, all right? We want to go with who we feel will be the best bet to help our team in the fantasy championships. Last week's analysis though, could have been a little bit better. We ended up finishing the week at 67%. We had some good hits though with like Amon Ross St. Brown, T Higgins, Alan Lazard, some misses like Byron Pingle, Devonte Smith, T.Y. Hilton, a few, a few hits and misses there. But listen, we're gonna get back on track. We're gonna go back over 70% this week, 100%. 70% of the time, it works all the time, right? So we're gonna go back to 70% this week. I can feel it, feel it, feel it. We got some good analysis here, so hit that like button for me, and let's roll into it and talk about our wide receivers this week. Hopping into the first matchup of the week that isn't Thursday Night Football. No Thursday Night Football this week, right into Sunday action. Atlanta is going to be at Buffalo this week. And for the Atlanta Falcons, we're not going to be trusting any of the wide receivers this week. Buffalo just been way too good against opposing wide receivers. Not a championship week route that we want to go. And for the Buffalo Bills, we're going to start Stephon Diggs. He's been so consistent, even though he hasn't had some of the same upside as last season because some of that volume has been spread out to other options. He's still, I mean, scoring wise, he is a threat to score every single time or get enough volume to kind of get you that 10 point threshold. So Stefan digs a very safe start. Cole Beasley will also end up being a start for me this week if he clears. But as of right now, we still do not know that, especially in PPR leagues going up against Atlanta. Uh, Cole Beasley could have a really, really safe day. We know for a fact that Gabriel Davis will be out. He is unvaccinated. He will miss this week. New York Giants at Chicago Bears for the New York Giants. Kadarius Tony for me is a start, but only in PPR leagues. It is very important to know that if you're in a PPR league, that is the only league I'd be starting Kadarius Tony in. He just doesn't have enough upside. Even if he gets 10 targets, eight, seven receptions, something like that, they're not really pushing the ball down the field with the quarterbacks that they're using right now. So for me, Kadarius Tony is only going to be a start in PPR leagues because that volume could push him towards 10 uh, if he gets, you know, five receptions and 50 yards, that's going to be 10 points. But he's going to be under that if it's anything half PPR standard wise. For Chicago, for Chicago, I will go with Darnell Mooney. Right now, his upside is kind of a low end wide receiver too for me though. But only if he gets to about nine targets. So that's kind of my goal. If he doesn't get to nine targets, he's not going to hit 10 points. If you wanted him to go any higher than a low end wide receiver too though, he's going to have to score. He is a very risky start for me. Allen Robinson still has not clear COVID protocol calls though at this point Nick Foles didn't look too bad last week so we'll go with Darnell Mooney but only as your wide receiver three and even then just expect a low ceiling Kansas City at Cincinnati I mean we know the only option for Kansas City is going to be Tyreek Hill do I like his upside this week I do actually going up against Cincinnati the one thing that I've seen with Cincinnati this this year especially with their cornerbacks on the outside anybody that's more of a one-dimensional wide receiver that's really like stretch the field or a possession type receiver they're fine with. They don't have a whole lot of it. But if you look at these guys that are quick bursts, they can run all sorts of routes. Their route tree is off the charts like a Tyreek Hill. They do struggle with those type of wide receivers at times. So Tyreek Hill is going to be a start for me. I know that I've been, you know, on Cincinnati's defense this year at times saying, hey, a woozy A, these guys are really, really good on the outside. Be careful with your wide receivers. This week with Tyreek Hill, though, I'm not on that bandwagon. He's just a different breed. For the Cincinnati Bengals, I mean, how can you sit any of these guys coming off the week that they did last week? Right now, T. Higgins, he's a little bit better upside and safety than Chase right now. So if you had to choose between Higgins and Chase, I'm going with Higgins. 
Tyler Boyd, he has 85 or more yards in three of his last four games. Kansas City, obviously going to be a team that's going to be throwing the ball a lot. They're going to be throwing the ball a lot. This is, has the potential for a really high-scoring game at home. Cincinnati really could feel the energy of the crowd and really get themselves into a groove this week. Expect a whole lot of throwing and expect all three of these guys to produce. Miami and Tennessee this week, and Miami coming off a huge win on Monday Night Football in New Orleans. Waddle has really high upside going up against Tennessee. Uh, Tennessee is only allowing 32 fantasy points per game to wide receivers over the last four weeks, though. One of the lower amounts in the league, a team that absolutely got shredded in the secondary to begin the year, is playing much better, and a lot of that has to do with their defensive pressure, creating more pressure up front and giving their secondary a little bit of a better opportunity to stick with their wide receivers. So because of that, Jalen Waddle for me is an easy start again this week. I mean, we see it him and Tua on the same page. Lots of those short crossing routes, uh, a lot of different things that they can do with Waddle that makes him successful. And then with Devontae Parker, he's also going to be a start, but we need to get him to five or more targets. If we can get him to five or more targets and can get him about 60 receiving yards, he's going to be right in that area. I just don't love his upside as much as Waddle. Parker for me is more of a wide receiver three start this week. And for the Tennessee Titans, I mean, A.J. Brown, even though the Miami defense has been really, really good, I'm still going to start A.J. Brown this week. He showed why we can't sit him last week. Right now for the other wide receivers, though, I mean, Julio Jones on the COVID list. Who knows if he'll be back in time. Last week, though, they had 11 players with, it, with one target or more. So I am not interested in anybody else other than A.J. Brown in this matchup. Las Vegas at Indianapolis, and for Vegas, Hunter Renfro is going to be a start for me this week. He comes with some risk. If he doesn't score this week, he's only likely to finish with about five to six fantasy points. And if you've been sticking around this whole season, you've heard me talk about this with Hunter Renfro, right? If he's not getting the yards and the touchdown, the upside is a little bit on the lower end. So if he doesn't score this week, there's not going to be a whole lot of upside. Probably doesn't finish with five to, or probably doesn't finish with 10 fantasy points. Probably finishes in that five to six range. Indianapolis is allowing the fewest fantasy points per game to opposing wide receivers right now. So they are playing very, very well over the last four weeks. They're keeping the wide receivers in check. Hunter Renfro has a low ceiling for me this week. And kind of the same thing for Michael Pittman. Las Vegas is allowing the seventh fewest fantasy points per game over the last four weeks. So Las Vegas's defense is playing much better. This is a risk, but we know Pittman is the main target. We know he's the guy that's going to get six to eight targets per game. I expect his floor to be a right around 10 fantasy points with very little room for upside. For Jacksonville and New England, there certainly isn't going to be a whole lot of of starts for this one, right? For Jacksonville, we're not we're not doing this. Marvin Jones had probably his best game of the season last week, but it doesn't matter. I'm not trusting anybody from Jacksonville, and I'm certainly not trusting them against a very good New England defense. Kendrick Bourne and Jacoby Myers will be starts for me, but they are low upside plays. Guys that I am only looking at as wide receiver threes if I don't have any other options and really I'm trying to figure out who to roll with this week is kind of that third option. I'm not going to flex either, either of these guys either. I'd rather go with any running back really at this point over these guys because here's the catch with Jacksonville. They are a poor team, but they don't give up a whole lot of scores to wide receivers. Now, a lot of that has to do with teams just running against them, right? But they don't give up a whole lot of scores to wide receivers. They give up a lot of catches, but the, just the totals by the end of the game are not there for the wide receivers. For Kendrick Bourne and Jacoby Myers, I'm expecting either of these guys to be right around six to eight targets. Receiving yards, that's going to be the tricky part. I'm thinking 60 to 80, and the score is going to be the If they score, you're good. If they don't, though, you're going to leave yourself with single-digit fantasy points for this, uh, for this game, for this team. So both of these guys, low in place for me in the wide receiver three spot. Tampa Bay continues to have issue after issue after issue. And the one thing I know about wide receivers this week, we're definitely doing Antonio Brown. It's an easier matchup, and I'm expecting a lot of the run game this week with Brown and Gronk kind of filling in those targets. But Mike Evans has gone on COVID. We don't know if he's going to be able to play this week. I'm not going to trust any of the other guys, though. Anybody else, I'm not going to trust. It's Antonio Brown and or Mike Evans. That's it. We don't even know if Mike Evans was going to be able to play this week because of the hamstring injury. Now COVID, we're just going to go ahead and just pretend like Mike Evans may not play this week because I don't know if I'd want to start him anyway, knowing how banged up he is. So Antonio Brown will be the only start there. And for the New York Giants, uh, or New York Giants, New York Jets, excuse me, Jameson Crowder is still questionable at this point. He's been banged up. And as far as everybody else goes, 
Championship week, if you're trusting a New York Jet, you probably lucked out to get to this point anyway. Philadelphia and Washington and De uh, Devontae Smith will be a start for me this week. Washington is still allowing the fifth most fantasy points per game over the last four weeks. So that defense at secondary really hasn't gotten any better. Obviously got absolutely torched this past week by Dallas. So Devontae Smith is a good start for me this week. Should have a really decent upside. I'm thinking right around 80-ish yards, probably around five, six receptions and a touchdown to boot. For Washington, Terry McLaurin, even though I don't love it this week with him facing Darius Slay, for Philadelphia, I, the, the, the honest question is, do you have anybody better than him? So if you're talking about having to start three wide receivers, Terry McLaurin is going to be my wide receiver three over a lot of guys that you could find off waivers, even like a Kendrick Bourne, a Jacoby Myers, like over those guys, I'm still going to trust Terry McLaurin anyway at that point. Hopefully Taylor Heineke got it is back this week, and we can really maybe get some of that vibe going and feeling a little bit better after he ended up missing last week with COVID. So let's keep our fingers crossed that he is back this week. Terry McLaurin gets himself a few targets, and he can turn those, at least one of them, into a big play. The LA Rams and the Baltimore Ravens is sure to be a fun game. Cup, Jefferson, Odell Beckham Jr., all three of these guys are going to be starts. Baltimore has allowed the most fantasy points per game to wide receivers over the last four weeks, so their secondary is getting absolutely burnt. Cup will have the highest upside of these guys. Van Jefferson will be a very risky wide receiver three start for me that has the upside of a low-end wide receiver one if he scores. And then Odell Beckham Jr. is a very safe wide receiver, low-end wide receiver two for me. Yes, not getting a ton of volume right now, but he's getting those targets in the end zone and the red zone that is letting him score at will over the last few weeks with the Rams. For Baltimore, Marquise Brown and Rashad Bateman are going to be starts for me as well. Be prepared for lower upside for Marquise Brown. This is what I am anticipating this week from the LA Rams and the Baltimore Ravens game. I don't know who is going to be the quarterback this week. Tyler Huntley could be back. Lamar Jackson could be back. It could, I mean, it could have to be Johnson again. I don't know who it's going to be this week. So for me, my guess is, is that Jalen Ramsey is going to be taking a look at Mark Andrews more than we would normally see, because they might not have to worry about the deep passing game as much with who they have at quarterback. With the two backups, they're not really going to stretch the field. We've seen that the last two weeks. They are not stretching the field with those guys. So the LA Rams say, we don't need to worry about these guys stretching the field. Let's put our best player on their best player, who is Mark Andrews. If Lamar Jackson comes back, how healthy is he? Is he going to be able to plant and really get the torque to get the ball down the field? Or are they also going to have the short, get the ball out quickly type passing game so Lamar Jackson isn't taking unnecessary hits? That is why I think Marquise Brown still sees cornerback one coverage. Mark Andrews sees a lot of Jalen Ramsey this week. And Rashad Bateman is a sneaky, sneaky wide receiver three play that because of all the attention going to Brown and Andrews, he's able to slip in and get himself a few Decent targets. This is definitely a matchup to watch. Denver at the Los Angeles Chargers. And for the Denver Broncos, it's still a no. I'm not trusting any of these guys. I don't care if it's Teddy B. I don't care if it's Drew Locke. I'm not trusting anybody. These wide receivers don't do ish. For the Los Angeles Chargers, Keenan Allen and Josh Palmer, as of right now, will be my starts. Mike Williams will miss this week again. He's unvaccinated. The 10-day window will not clear for him before this game starts. He will not play this week. Keenan Allen is a start no matter what. Continues to get the volume high upside played every single week. For me, though, it's Joshua Palmer as of right now if Jalen Guyton misses again. However, if Jalen Guyton ends up clearing, then Jalen Guyton becomes a start. Joshua Palmer moves to a sit. Both of these guys are risky wide receiver three plays. If Guyton plays, he's a risky wide receiver three with wide receiver two upside because he's going to take over that deep threat game for Mike Williams. If Guyton doesn't clear and it's Josh Palmer, he's not going to have that same upside, but he is going to have a wide receiver three type of floor for me because he should see more than enough volume. This will be a fun one to watch. Keenan Allen right now, again, obviously a start, but Palmer and Guyton are both guys that I really, really like under the radar guys that could end up helping a fantasy team this week if you're scrambling to find matchups. Houston at San Francisco, and for Houston, Brandon Cooks would be the only guy that I play if he clears before then, and we have not heard that yet, so keep an eye out for the rankings video, and I'll talk about it more then. For San Francisco, Brandon Ayuk and Debo Samuel will be starts. Now, it looks like Trey Lance may end up playing this game this week because Jimmy Garoppolo has a torn UCL, so because of that, that torn ligament in his thumb, 
really going to hinder him throwing the football. Looks like they could be moving to Trey Lance this week. Now, if they do, Debo Samuel, to me, has great upside no matter what because of the way they utilize him. The change in quarterback doesn't hurt that. It may potentially hurt Brandon Ayuk. So for me, Ayuk is a risky wide receiver three play with some wide receiver two upside. Now, here's the thing. Talking about like Terry McLaurin a couple of matchups ago, Terry McLaurin, I'm going to play over Brandon Ayuk. I'm going to play him over a guy like I just talked about with Joshua Palmer or Jalen Guyton. So that's kind of the area that we're in right now with these wide receiver threes. I'm playing Terry McLaurin over all, all, over all these guys, but if you don't have anybody with better upside than Ayuk, it's a wide receiver three. I don't necessarily hate it this week. We're really going to have to hope for that uh, touchdown to come similar to last week. Arizona at Dallas is going to bring my Manscaped must-watch matchup of the week. Hey, the holidays have passed, but it doesn't mean that you can't still head over to manscaped.com and utilize our promo code HEADLINERS at checkout because you're going to get 20% off all of their great products and you're going to get free shipping. So if you got a little extra money in the wallet after Christmas, make sure you head over there and spend a little, that, a little bit of that on Manscaped to make sure that you're taking care of yourself. Now, for my Manscaped must-watch matchup, Arizona at Dallas, a lot of good wide receiving options in this game. Now, for Arizona, Christian Kirk is going to be a start for me. Christian Kirk, I mean, he's my wide receiver one on this team right now. I know A.J. Green has been getting looks, but this week, A.J. Green is going to get digs, all right? And now, Travion Diggs, yes, he gives up a lot of yards, but A.J. Green just doesn't move the same way that he used to, so I think Diggs is going to have himself a very successful game against A.J. Green, and they're going to be looking away from that matchup a little bit, especially when you have guys like Christian Kirk, who's going to be a mismatch either on the other side or out of the slot. And then Zach Ertz, also a really good play this week as well, and we'll talk about that. But he's getting a lot of targets with the injuries. Chase Edmonds is going to get a lot of targets. They're going to utilize the running game. The one thing that they're going to want to do is they're going to get rid of the ball quickly, right? Mika Parsons on the other side, really bringing that pressure to Marcus Lawrence over there as well. That's going to mean Zach Ertz, Christian Kirk, Chase Edmonds. Those are going to be the main targets this week for Kyler Murray. For the Dallas Cowboys, CeeDee Lamb and Amari Cooper are going to be starts for me. We saw last week the upside that Amari Cooper continues to have. CeeDee Lamb, so it feels like it's going to be, hey, a risk every single week. Amari Cooper is going to get his. We're going to hope that CeeDee Lamb gets his. And then for Michael Gallup, we're just going to leave him out of the equation this week. He's kind of the odd man out right now in this wide receiver group because CeeDee Lamb and Amari Cooper are going to be the guys to get the looks first. Carolina at New Orleans. And for Carolina, DJ Moore is going to be a start for me this week, but only if you don't have better options. For me, DJ Moore is my wide receiver three this week. But if you own a guy like Terry McLaurin, I would start Terry McLaurin over him 100%. I, I mean, Brandon Ayuk, I would be close to starting Brandon Ayuk over DJ Moore. The problem is, is the it's the it's this freaking quarterback carousel that they've got going on where they've got Cam Newton in, but then they go with Sam Darnold. There's just no cohesiveness to this offense right now. Matt Rule is scrambling. You can tell he's playing for his life right now. He could end up being fired at the end of the season. He wants to try and get this turned around, but he's outsmarting himself and he's trying way too hard and it just doesn't look good. So for DJ Moore, he will be a start, but if you have better options, I'm going better options. And for New Orleans, I mean, we don't know who the quarterback is going to end up being this next week. If it's going to end up being Ian Book again, we might end up having issues. Taysom Hill and Trevor Simeon obviously would be much better options, especially Taysom Hill coming back, but I'm not going to trust any of the wide receivers at this point. Detroit at Seattle and Amon Ross St. Brown coming on really strong at the end of the year. He's going to get Jared Goff back this week, hopefully. And this is a really good matchup, even though it is in Seattle. It's a very good matchup for them. He's going to be a start. Love that. I mean, Amon Ross St. Brown is a wide receiver one basically over the last three weeks. So we're going to roll with him. A really safe start. I'm playing Amon Ross St. Brown over DJ Moore. I'm playing him over Terry McLaurin. I'm, I mean, he's going to be basically a wide receiver two for me and a really good start this week. For Seattle, DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett. Now, when you play these guys, you have to anticipate some risk here, right? So if you've got better options, that's great. But the problem is if you own DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett, you probably don't have a whole lot of better options. I'm not getting cute though in the fantasy playoffs right now though. Tyler Lockett and, and DK Metcalf absolutely are risky, but it's the Detroit Lions. Seattle's going to continue to be at home. They don't look good on offense right now. But again, who can you play that has the upside of DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett? If you have somebody that might be safer, like an Amon Ross St. Brown, and you're like, oh, I want to play him over DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett, 
I get that argument. But if you're trying to go with like Jalen Guyton, Josh Palmer, if you're trying to go with those guys, if you really want to play like an AJ Green, who I have listed as a sit, I'm not going with those guys. I'll risk it with the upside potential of Metcalf and Lockett before I get too risky with anybody else. Minnesota and Green Bay will be a fun one, and there's just a bound to be a lot of fantasy points scored for wide receivers in this one. Justin Jefferson will obviously lock him in as a wide receiver one this week. Adam Thielen's going to be a start as of right now, but he got a little bit banged up last week, had to keep coming off the field. If for any reason he can't make it back this week, then K.J. Osborne would move to a start for me instead. And for Green Bay, Devontae Adams and Alan Lazard are starts. Now here's the same thing, though. MVS is on COVID, but if he clears and comes back against Minnesota, a team that over over the last four weeks is a lot of the third most fantasy points to opposing wide receivers. I will go with MVS over Alan Lazard. The big playability of MVS is just going to be too much to pass up. I'll go with MVS over a guy like I mentioned earlier. I'll go with MVS over a Terry McLaurin. I'll go with an MVS over a guy like Derry, uh, DJ Moore. Uh, guys that we just talked about, though, MVS over like a Metcalf or a Lockett. That I wouldn't. But MVS, I do like him this week if he ends up clearing he could have huge big play potential. For Cleveland and Pittsburgh, I'm just not interested in risking it with anybody this week from Cleveland. With the way that offense has been playing, with the way Baker Mayfield has been playing, I'm not going to risk it in our fantasy matchup against the Pittsburgh Steelers on the road at Pittsburgh, okay? I'm just not going to do it. For the wide receivers on Pittsburgh's side, though, Chase Claypool has been way too up and down this season. He's not scoring. He is getting some yards, but he's not getting those big plays that he did last year. So D, uh, DJ, Deontay Johnson, he is going to be the only guy that I trust in this matchup on Monday Night Football. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Wide receiver start and sits in the book for week 17. Get those fantasy championship lineup set, ladies and gentlemen, and make sure you're coming back for the rankings videos for all the updates that we'll have throughout the week. Make sure also, before you leave this video, you hit the like button for me. Leave a comment down below. Who is your top wide receiver play this week? And if you're new here, subscribe and stick around for all the great off-season content. I'm going to get out of here, though, ladies and gentlemen. Everybody stay safe and stay healthy, and I will catch you on the next episode of the Fantasy Headliners. I'm a headliner.